Hi guys, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and this is my week of zebra ramblings. If you missed my first video, you can check it out in the description down below. But otherwise, my topic for today, I was really hoping I'd come up with a topic by the time I finished that sentence and I didn't. Because my topic for today is brain fog. Brain fog is something that I think everyone experiences because brain fog is a symptom, not a diagnosis. So this is something that I think everyone will be able to relate to and maybe it'll give you a word for it, but this is something that chronically ill people experience constantly. So everybody has experienced walking into a room and realizing you forgot why you walked in in the first place. That's basically brain fog, but brain fog is to the nth degree. I don't talk on the phone because if I'm having a phone conversation with someone, as soon as I hang that phone up, I have no idea what we talked about or who even called me. I'll have to call my mom and be like, so I'm pretty sure Dr. So-and-so just called me, but I can't, and I think he wanted to move the appointment, but I can't remember to when, and I can't remember why, and then she'll have to call him back and figure out what in the world happened. So my doctors have my mom's number because I can't be trusted to take phone calls for myself, which I'm very lucky to have supportive parents. I don't know what I'm gonna do when, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but when I live on my own, I'm a mess. It's definitely something I'm working on, but it's something I think people who aren't chronically ill, like you've experienced it because it's a symptom. So when you're sick, you know, the worse you feel, the kind of more cloudy your head is. Just if you're sick all the time, your head's gonna be kind of cloudy all the time. Cause especially it gets brought on by things like pain and fatigue, anything that'll keep your brain from like working at maximum capacity. The way I think of it is, you know, if my body is screaming at my brain, my brain isn't gonna hear someone talking to me. Cause even though my body can't be heard by the outside world, my brain's job is to hear my body. My brain has to hear my body yelling at it all day, every day. So it is not performing to maximum capacity and it breaks my heart. I think I used to be a lot smarter than I am now. I'm not saying chronically ill people are not smart. They're very, very intelligent. And I think that we have valuable life experience to share. It's just that quick recall and that quick short-term memory is not my strong suit. And it's because it's hard to take in information if you're always in pain or you're always exhausted. That's really difficult. So I think the best description of it I've ever heard is that it's like, it's like your mind is trying to wade through jello. You know how when your muscles are really fatigued, it kind of feels like the air is made of jello and you don't feel strong enough to wade through it or you can wade through it, but it's more effort than usual. That's how it feels with brain fog, but mentally. It's like, I have to edit these a lot when I'm, I, you know, I'm gonna leave that in because it's a perfect example. I, I have to edit these a lot because I will just trail off randomly and completely lose my train of thought. And I know it's something everyone does, but it's something that I will have to, if I were to just keep doing this until I got a perfect take, I would never leave here. I can't get through a full thought without at some point like trailing off and having to come back in. I'm the worst about interrupting in conversations because I'll get halfway through a point and kind of trail off and then someone else will start talking, but I've gone completely static. And as soon as I remember what I was saying, I just start saying it again, even though someone else has started talking and the conversation has moved on. So I come across as incredibly rude sometimes, and I so don't mean to, but it's because I just lose it there for a second and I zone out and I'm like, what am I talking about? Where am I? Who are these people? And I instantly know all of those answers, but my brain can't get it together enough to then figure out, okay, well, based on that information, what in the world were you saying, woman? So I end up all the time just like, and then snapping back in for no apparent reason. I kind of wish I could just upload an unedited video like this so that you could see how my mind works and how long it takes to get points out, but it would be such a long video and no one would actually watch it and that would defeat the whole point of raising awareness. So I can't even do that. I can't even raise awareness about brain fog because of my brain fog. I think the key to bridging the gap in communication between chronically ill people and able-bodied people is going to come a lot from trying to identify symptoms that we have 
that they also experience to like a lower degree and then trying to help them understand therefore when we're where we're coming from because i i people kind of think of disability issues as like that oh yeah like everybody agrees that disabled people should have access and like everybody agrees the world should be accessible but they don't actually like they like the idea but once nobody wants to be the person who wasn't already accommodating a chronically ill person so if you approach an able-bodied person no i've done it no matter how you do it even if you're perfectly polite there's a chance that able-bodied person's gonna lash out at you because they'd rather lash out at you than have to admit that they were in some way impeding a disabled person's access so it's actually very counterintuitive but it's happened a lot um there have been multiple situations where like there would pla be places that I'd spend a lot of time and they'd always talk about like oh let me know if there's anything we can do to make you more comfortable etc until eventually i would say something and even if even if i could provide a i'm having this problem if you could just make xyz small change um it would help me have access it would make the space a lot more accessible i was practically cussed out for saying that like People really, really don't want to know what they're doing wrong. Even if you don't phrase it that they're doing something wrong, they know. And people would rather get mad at you than have to deal with that. So, I think the key is gonna be that you can't hate something you understand. And there are lots of people who have really hated me for reasons I now know are based back in my chronic illness. Either they, either they found me annoying and I now know that the reason I would zone out for long periods of time and become incredibly uninteresting in conversation is because of my brain fog. Or because, you know, I wouldn't let them touch me. I've had boyfriends in the past who would yell at me because I wouldn't let them put my, their arm around me, which I now know is because it would put pressure on my spine, which is already super weak. So all of it was very reasonable things, but things that I have been hated for. But you can't hate something you understand. So world, like it or not, you're gonna understand me because all I've wanted all of my life is to be heard. And now I know why no one was hearing me. So I'm gonna use this platform to be heard. I think this video about brain fog just became the first in a new series. I'm gonna start a new series and I'm calling it what's it like because I think if more people understood what living with a chronic illness is like I think there'd be a lot more kindness so in the comments down below let me know what you need help understanding I think there's lots of things that are my reality and are the reality of other sick people that are not everyone's reality, but I don't necessarily know what those things are. I'm still trying to learn because for me, throwing up every morning is normal. For me, my fingers bending like this when I hold a pencil is normal. I don't know until someone tells me that it's not. So leave in the comments down below, what are things that either as a chronically ill person you don't know how to express or how to explain to the able-bodied people in your life, or if you're an able-bodied person or just someone with a different chronic illness than someone else, what people who have chronic illnesses, what are things, be it symptoms, ideas, feelings, things you don't understand about chronically ill people. I can't speak for everyone, but. Maybe if I can make you understand what it's like, maybe you'll understand and you'll hear me. So brain fog, what's it like? It's like waking up in a crowded room with no memory of how you got there. And having someone walk up to you whose face you don't remember and having them hug you. And then being asked to give a speech on a subject you've never heard of and then getting a standing ovation from a sea of blank faces all at once. It's terrifying because as soon as you lose that train of thought, you lose information and information is the only thing that 
helps us communicate. And if we lose our ability to communicate, we lose our ability to connect and we lose our ability to function. If I can't remember how to speak to people, I can't remember to eat sometimes. And I can't remember that I need to drink water. I, I will be thirsty and be too brain fogged. To, I'll, I'll know that I feel bad, but I'm too foggy to figure out what it is that is feeling bad. Quick life hack, if you have a chronic illness, there is a website I will link down below that I personally use to, uh, to help combat brain fog in terms of self-care. I'll also insert the URL here. I highly recommend it. It takes you through everything, through medicine, through have you groomed yourself recently. Like, Basically, if you're feeling bad and you can't figure out why you're feeling bad, this website will help. But anyways, I got a little real in this video. I'm not sorry for that. And uh, until next time, hoard those spoons, guys. <laughs>